God's word How he fed the little bird Take a bird and take it to the Lord And leave it there Leave it there, leave it there I want to leave your bird there Let's leave the bird and take it to the Lord And leave it there I see the Lord in the bird now He is sure
a burden bearer and he's a heavy load sharer. Take all your burdens and leave them at the feet of Jesus. Praise God at this time. I take it a great privilege of mine to present to you God's man servant, Dr. Telford D. Davis. Please put your hands together and make him welcome in Jesus' name. Oh, come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, come, let us adore Oh, come, let us adore him. seated please so delighted we are once again to be in the house of God and I greet you well amen God bless you all right I will invite you to turn with me to the text that was read from the 37th division of the psalm and the first 25 verses were read, which in themselves have spoken to us, and I believe have already ministered to us. And now, Lord, we ask that as we seek to present your word, that your Holy Spirit will anoint this lump of clay, make it an instrument of your peace, a vessel available and usable. I pray that you will arise for every person in my audience, here and now, whenever and wherever. I pray that you will save the lost, reclaim the backsliders, heal the sick, and strengthen the saved. Lord, let hell be defeated, and let heaven rejoice at what you will do in our midst today, we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Shout amen. amen. Glory. I want to share a timely word with you. The theme is because they trust in God. The sub-theme is trust God. He is able. 
Tell your neighbor, trust God. Trust God. He, is able. he is able. Praise God Almighty. The book of Psalms is a collection of 150 spiritual songs and poems. And they were used by the church in all ages and are being used contemporarily. The Psalms are wonderful. They were used in worship and devotional exercises. And today we continue to use the Psalms to bring hope and inspiration because they came out of personal experiences of many individuals. They were actually used as the in book in the second temple that was established. They would sing the Psalms and give praise and glory to Almighty God. The, the Psalms are often called the Psalms of David. And it is so because David authored a large number of the psalm. Of the 150, David authored maybe some 73 of the psalms of the 150. Another 31 were written by many other authors, such as Sons of Korah. Haspa, Heman, Hethan, Solomon, Moses, Haggai, Zechariah, Ezekiah, and Hezra. All those persons have contributed to the writing of the psalm. Well, you said to me, Bishop, 46 is missing. Well, 46 of the psalms are anonymous. They are not very sure who the writers were, those Psalms 46. But the 150 collection, when you read through them, when you meditate on them, they bring great inspiration to God's people. And some people, even for the purposes of seeking blessing, and others for iniquitous purposes, they read the Psalms. Folks would say to different ones from time to time, I'm going to read a Psalm for you. Well, it's a wonderful thing to read a Psalm. Because the Psalm can't hurt the person. It can only bring blessing to them. Are you with me, somebody? The Psalms are a type of are arranged in a kind of order, well, let me say in a topical order. They are arranged in a topical order and in different divisions. Each one has a topic which appears more prominently in it. And I want to give you an example, laying a foundation here. In topical order, and when you read the Psalms in that order, you find that the messages... And the inspiration and the blessing that you need in a particular area will be more real if you read the Psalms accordingly. Are you with me? When you want to meditate on prayer from the Psalm, you look at Psalms such as number 55, number 70, 77, 85, 86, 142 and 143. Sure you weren't able to write all of those down. Get the CD, please. You want to meditate on safety. And this is a well-known one. The safety the psalm is number 46. God is our refuge and strength, etc. When you want to read about Old age, persons in declining years. The psalm addresses all of that in number 71. And please bear with me 
I want to read something there from Psalm 71 to give you the kind of example I'm talking about. Old age, senior persons, which begins over 70, I was told. In Psalm 71 and verse 7, verse 5 rather, it says, For thou art my hope, O Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. So now this is an old person reflecting. From my youth you have been my trust. In verse number 9, he says, Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. So when you know how to read them, you will get the message more appropriately. Are you still there? Same 71 verse 17. O oh God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto I have declared thy wondrous works. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me not, until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. Are you getting the example? Yes. So it is wonderful when you know what to read at a particular time. So if there is an, a, an aging person, a senior person who feels despondent and discouraged and weak and you can't pray like you used to pray, you can't fast as you used to fast, you can't go on the missions as you used to go and the devil zeroing and he tells you that you do not, you see that God has forsaken you. You can read the psalm and say, oh my God, my head is gray and I'm getting weak, but you will not forsake me. Somebody shout something there. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. When you want to read, amen, about the vanity of life in the psalm, you look at number 39, number 49, and number 90. Those will tell you of the vanity of life. And all men should not put their trust in material things because they are vanity. When you want to get inspiration and motivation, you go to the psalm number 42. And many of you know what it says. As the heart... Panted after the water brook. So panted my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsts for God. For the living God, when shall I appear before him? You're seeking motivation, inspiration, lifting up higher heights and deeper depths. Somebody shout something there. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you are looking for... Amen. Amen. Pit. When you are in penitence, you're going through a rough period and all the hells of hell are all over you. You read number 25, number 38, number 51, and number 130. Amen. And finally, when you're looking for pardon, you read number 32, and I must read a few verses there. Number 32, when you're looking for pardon, everybody say pardon. It says, blessed is, the, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Verse number five, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Number seven, thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from, from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. And then God says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Oh, praise God. Be not as the horse or the mule, 
which must be, amen, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come nigh unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall come past him. When you read this, my God, it inspires you. Somebody should praise God. If the word is ministering to you, give him praise. So you see, when you have an understanding, you do not just break the Bible and read what comes there. You are able to target, and when you target and read topically, according to the circumstance of your life, you get the greater benefit and blessing. Somebody praise God. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Those are the examples I give. Now let's try to get into the message from the 37th Psalm. The Psalm number 37 and the Psalm number 73 are under the heading of the prosperity of the wicked con contrasted with the righteous. The prosperity of the wicked in contrast with that of the righteous. And when you read Psalm number 37 and Psalm number 73, and ironically, you look at the, the correlation of those numbers. 37 can give you 73, just change the unit. And 73 can give you 37, just change the unit. Are you with me, somebody? Hallelujah. Those, they show, amen, the fate or the end of the wicked and also that of the righteous. And I want to point out to us, my brothers and sisters, that you must recognize that in every state of life, God is in control. The God who said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you, he is true to his word. So whatever you're going through as a child of God, do not cast your eyes on the other side of the fence and say, my God, look how the grass is green on that side and look how my pastor is dried and bare. Even if it is dry and it is bare, the God of heaven who sends the rain and caused the grass to grow in the fullness of his time, he will send rain to your dry, barren pastor, and only a matter of time, your grass will grow. So you don't have to drum fence. Can I talk to the church of God? You don't have to drum fence or break rank. Just be still and know. Hey, somebody shout something here. Hallelujah. Be still and know that Jehovah is God. And he will be exalted among the heathen. He will be exalted in the earth. Lift your hand and your heart and your soul, whatever is happening, and say, The Lord of hosts is with me, and the God of Jacob is my refuge. God, somebody praise him here. Hallelujah! Oh, glory! Oh, glory! Hallelujah! Jesus, mm. give him praise. Psalm 73, don't lose 37, but just flip over to 73. Now let me show you something there in relation to these two psalms. You know, and this is a psalm of Aspa. Number 73 is a psalm of Aspa. And number 37 is a psalm of David. Look at the words. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. Righteous. But as for me, now it's a godly man talking, you know. 
God is good to Israel corporately. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. Why? For when I look on the other side of the fence, oh God Almighty, when I look at the Passa Passa crowd and the Sting crowd and the Heineken Spartan crowd, when for, when, for I was envious, God Almighty, for I was envious. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Don't act as though it is only Aspha who had that observation. We as Christians look sometimes. Are oh, you not saying nothing? We are serving God in spirit and in truth. And you see some sinner people. They don't pray, they don't fast, they don't read Bible, they don't go to church, and them look healthy and strong, and God help me in this house. And some of us are serving God enough to be nursing sickness. So you ask God, what going on, Jesus? I done saw them ago. I show them gone. Them gone commit adultery and fornication. Liars and thieves and murderers, and I am a Christian. How come? God help me. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, for there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. I don't want to ask how many Christians we have here this morning. Who are suffering with chronic ailments and chronic diseases, you know. I'm not going to ask. But I know in this gathering there are persons here who have been afflicted by the wicked enemy with chronic conditions. Fasting people, praying people, holy living people. But their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Verse 7, their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than their heart could wish. <laughs> Boy, Aspa was really talking to God, you know. They have more than their heart could wish. Verse 12, behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. And then he says in verse 13, look at the comparison here. He says, verily, I have cleansed my hands, my heart in vain. In other words, it don't make sense me continue. It would have been better if I was in their company. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all the day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. God help me. Verse 16, when I thought to know this, I was, it was too painful for me until, until, until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then understood I their hand, oh glory, surely thou deceit them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? In a moment, they are utterly consumed with terror. You know, when Aspa looked at it, were it not for the messages and the manifestation of God in his people in the sanctuary, if he had not discovered or seen the difference between the righteous and the unrighteous, the godly and the ungodly, he said, is it that I have cleansed my heart in vain? 
No, I have not cleansed it in vain. Come on, somebody. Because when I see the summation of the whole thing, I realize that what they have and who they are is like butter in the sun. Talk to me, somebody. It's like butter in the sun. It can melt away so fast. Hallelujah. But the righteous will hold on his way. And he that has clean hands shall be made stronger and stronger. Somebody praise God in this house. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So the psalmist tells us, do not fret yourself because of them. Oh, Jesus. Because God is on your side. Tell your neighbor, God is on your side. Mm, oh, glory. Jesus. Jesus. And if God be for us, tell me, Hey, who can be against us? Why this message, Bishop? Let me tell you why. This message is purposeful. Because in a time of crisis, in a time of scarcity, in a time where the nations of the world, amen, seem to be grappling with all kinds of difficulties and tragedies and all kinds of situations when it comes down to survival of the fittest. And in a situation where if you are not, amen, join, if you do not join the corruptors and become corrupt, it would appear as though you cannot get by. Hallelujah. If you do not do under the table deal, talk to me somebody. If you don't hide and buy the lotto, hide and buy the pig tree, hide and do the this and do the that. If you don't keep two men and two women, or three, four and five, what one can give you, another one give you. Can I preach in this house? It would seem as though, as a child of God, you're on the losing end. But let me tell you straight up, you're not on the losing end. You're on the winning side. You're on the winning side. And regardless of what is happening, you are still more than conqueror. Hallelujah. So don't let the enemy tempt you to give in. It is purposeful. Because it is intended to encourage. It is intended to strengthen. To encourage and to strengthen the suffering saints. The suffering saints. The marginalized the saints. The financially embarrassed saints. The saints who are on the hedge, on the brink. It is intended to strengthen your faith. It is intended to encourage. It is purposeful. Encourage my soul. And let us journey on. Somebody say something. Hallelujah. It says to all such brothers and sisters in Christ, wherever they are, look on both sides of the coin. Do not just look on the prosperity of the ungodly and say, Lord, what's happening? Look on both sides of the proverbial coin and do not be tempted to lose hope. Are you with me? Do not be tempted to lose hope, nor to give up, 
nor to become disheartened and discouraged. Fight the good fight of faith. Glory to God. Nobody told me that this road would be easy. God, I'm talking right into somebody's heart. Nobody told me that serving Christ would be easy. For they that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer some things. Hallelujah. But say like the Apostle Paul, what shall separate me from the love of Christ? Who shall separate me? Shall famine, no distress, nakedness, peril, sword, height, nor depths. No other creature. Oh, somebody praise God. Am I encouraging anybody here today? Am I strengthening anybody here today? Hallelujah. Be not dismayed what here be tied. Papa Jesus, my God, will take care of you. He may not come today, but there is a tomorrow with my God. Hallelujah. He may not come on day one, but even on day four, day four, four days late, four days late, four days late, but you are still an on time God. Somebody praise God if the Holy Ghost is upon you. Hey! Shekotomaha! On time, God. Yes, he is. Trust God. He's able. Tell your neighbor he's able. Mm. Trust him. And talk to persons who have been through some fires. Talk to persons who have been through some floods. Talk to persons who have crossed some hot, burning desert. Hallelujah. Can I encourage somebody here today? Talk to persons who have been there and who will tell you, I've been through enough. Do I have any such such in this house? God, am I the only one? Do I have anybody here who will say, For I've been through enough to know that God is enough for me. Yeah, Lobo Shandia. He has come through so many times that put my mind at ease for good. I stake my very life that God will take care of me. I am a shepherd. God, somebody help me here. Because I've been true enough hey, to know that God is enough for me. How oh, could I ever doubt this mighty God? Who rules this universe? How could I ever doubt his ability? Slap somebody, tell them, trust God. Say, trust God. I know you're going through, but trust God. I know your back is against the wall, but trust God. I know hell is all against you, but trust God. Hey! is coming true for somebody in your midnight hour. Woo! Lord, 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 wave your hand on this anointing. 
Wave your hand in this anointing. Hallelujah. Trust God. Mm. Look on both sides. So Psalm 37 and Psalm 73 are not all about the prosperity of the ungodly. They are also about the sure promises of God to the godly. The sure, secured promises of God to the righteous. God of heaven. Somebody say something down here. Mm. Yeah, Lord. Some are going through their waters. Some are going through the flood. Some are facing the burning fires. But he brings all of us through the blood. Some are going through their great sorrows. But listen to the voice of an angel. He'll give you a song in the night season. <laughs> Oh! And all the day long. I want to leave with you seven of those sure promises. And part two of this message and coming down. Seven. From Psalm number 37, our text portion this morning seven such sure and secure promises that cannot fail so don't take your gaze off your master in your pastor and look on the other side keep your eyes on Jesus according to Psalm 37 and verse 3 promise number one is that he will give you your divine supplies. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. And verily thou shalt be fed. Shalt be fed. Speak that in your life. Speak it in your kitchen. Speak it in the cupboard. Speak it in the refrigerator. Speak it. And God will manifest it in a practical way. You shall be fed. That's a promise of God. Mm. Promise number two. According to verses four through six. God says I will answer your prayers. Answers will come to our prayers. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto, it, unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth thy righteousness as light. And thy judgment as a new day. Speak it. Although you see no sign. According to Second Kings. You see no sign of cloud. That rain is going to fall. Dig the ditches. And say God is going to fill them. Talk to me somebody. Dig them. You don't have to wait until you see sign. Jesus said to one of his beloved disciples, Men, I tell you the truth. Those who have not seen and yet believed, they are blessed. If you got to wait until you see it, that is sight, that is not faith. Come on, somebody. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things 
not see. Hallelujah. And by that kind of faith, the elders obtain a good report. Dig the ditches. God will fill them. Promise number three. Earthly blessings. Everybody say blessings. Verse 9 and 11. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. 11 says, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. So this earthly blessings, it's also accompanied by an abundance of God's peace. Come on, somebody. What Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22 says? It says, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and had it no sorrow. No sorrow. So whenever he blesses you, he gives you his peace. Oh, praise God. But the wicked is like the troubled sea. You don't see what the troubled sea has done to the shorelines and done to homes and properties and knock them down, destroy them. That's what wicked people do all over this world. Cause all kind of problem. You're not saying anything. Wicked store up problem. Problem and trouble in the neighborhood. Problem and trouble in the workplace. Hallelujah. And if you have wicked in the church, they store up problem and trouble in the church. Wherever the wicked people are, it spells problem, trouble, bad news. But the righteous of the peace of God, my peace I give unto you. My peace I leave with you. Not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Somebody shout something down here. Earthly blessings and an abundance of God's peace. Blessing number four. Contentment and support. Verse number 16 through 19. What the verses say. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. The righteous know how to be contented. Are you with me? Oh God Almighty. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be not butter again, son, shall be forever. It shall endure. Glory to God. Give him praise. They shall not be ashamed in evil time and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. That's the righteous. Anybody believe that? Believe that it's going to work for you. Give him praise. Or let's move on. Blessing number five. Guidance favor and extra blessing anybody know what extra blessing means extra blessing is all God is obligated to give us you know is our daily bread and if he provides a daily bread every day that's enough but extra blessing is not just enough but more than enough Thank you, sister. Whilst enough is good, but more than enough is better. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. 
Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup. <laughs> God of heaven, somebody say, run me over, run me over. Run, 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 run me over. Fill me up and run me over with extra blessing. Hey! Hey, oh my God Almighty! Fill me up or run me over. Look at verse 22. It says, For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though ye fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young. Dear God, and now I'm old, said David. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor received begging bread. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Somebody shout something there. Mm. Verse 31, he says, The law of his God is in it, is. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. None. When you acknowledge the Lord in all your ways, he's going to direct your path. Give him praise in the house. I said to someone recently, I have not made many major mistakes of my life. To God be the glory. And it is so because I got saved at an early age. Are you not saying nothing? I have not made, I repeat, any major mistakes of my life. And I accredit it to the leading of God's Holy Spirit. And the divine will of God that has kept me. Somebody shout a praise down there. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, trust God. Trust God. Tell him he's able. He's able. Hallelujah. God. He's able. He's able. Blessing number six. Deliverance and help. Verses 39 and 40. Psalm 37. What they say. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. That's what I ask us to do. Trust in God. So don't worry about wicked people. God will deliver us from the wicked. Are you with me? Amen. And if you have to bear with some of them and their wickedness in your house, bear with them and say in your heart, it may belong. <laughs> it may belong. But it won't be forever. There's going to be deliverance one day. Are you not saying nothing? You must look on your circumstances also and tell your circumstances. You have been around for a long time. But I decree in the name of Jesus, you won't be forever. You will soon have to pack up and leave. Come on, church. Tell whatever it is in the body. You're going to have to go. We both will not occupy this temple indefinitely. 
Remember, you are not land, you are not owner, you are not landlord, you are tenant. Cancer is a tenant that you did not rent your house. Somebody praise God down here. Diabetes is a tenant. You didn't rent him nowhere. Him not pay you nothing. He's costing you more than paying you. Are oh, you not saying nothing? Blood pressure is a trespassing tenant. The high one and the low one. Come on, somebody. You must tell them that they have to go. Hold up. You, mu you must not nurse them, you know. Whatever things you nurse, you want them to get well and stay well. You must fight against them. Somebody praise him down here. Praise him down here. Praise him. Praise him. Fight them tooth and nail. Fight them under the blood. Fight them at the altar. Fight them in fasting. Fight them in prayer. Fight them with the sword. Fight them with the spirit. Resist your step. Resist them. And even when them tell you you can't do certain things, press against them by faith in the name of Jesus. Because you trust the living God. And they that trust in the Lord shall be. Lift your right hand and say, Mount Zion, Mount Zion. Mount Zion, Mount Zion. Hey, I'm Hallelujah. Shout something over here. Hallelujah. Woo! This looks like a quiet corner. Shout something over this quiet corner. Resist what you need to resist. Don't accommodate them kind of stranger. Hallelujah. 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 Trust God. For he's able. Coming down. Blessing number seven. And I give you blessing number seven from Psalm 73. So flip over there, please. Psalm 73. And this blessing is divine support, wise counsel, guidance, fellowship, and after all, eternal rest in glory. Listen to the words of Psalm 73, 23 through 28. Hallelujah. Mm. Nevertheless, I am continually with, with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. <laughs> oh God. God, it doesn't matter what the state of my life is. Hallelujah. I am continually with thee. Once, I think it's Job that puts it this way. He says, neither have I gone back from the commandments of your lips. I've esteemed the words of your mouth more than my necessary food. Somebody say something. Read on. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. And afterward, receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart fainted. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. 
Thou hast destroyed all them that go a warring from thee. But, 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 it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God. But I may declare all thy works. It is good, it is good, it is good, it is good. Draw nigh to him in times of trouble. Draw nigh to him in times of distress. Draw nigh to him. Trust in God. Because they trust in God. He brought them through. I close. Ruth and Daniel, David, Esther, Job, and others, they stand ready to take the witness stand to declare their testimonies concerning their stand for God and how he brought them out. Because they trusted him, the testimonies of those patriarchs of old, Ruth and David, Daniel, Esther, Job, and many others are monumental before us today. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Because they have trusted God, he came through for them. Will you trust him some more today? Will you trust him some more? Friend, will you trust him? With your life, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to me. Will you trust him with your life? Will you trust him with your family? As for me and my house, I will lead them to the Lord. And we will serve the Lord. Will you trust him for your health today? He is the balm in Gilead. He is your great physician. Will you trust him for healing? Will you trust him with your finances? In honoring him, in giving, a sowing seeds. So that in the fullness of time, as he has promised to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that you shall not have room enough to receive it. Will you trust him sufficiently in all of those areas? Limited finances. But will you trust him enough to pay your tithes? Trust him enough to give an offering? Trust him enough to give benevolent gift to somebody who is in need. And consider it as sowing seeds. Will you trust him? Will you trust him with your future? I ask you all. Will you trust him with your soul? Will you trust him with your soul? All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I surrender all. Will you give them to him? And say, take, Lord. And as you lead, I will follow. Will you trust him? Some more to be. Bow your heads with me, close your eyes. Yeah, take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal truth. I 
I'm calling for unsaved I'm calling for backsliders I'm calling for Christians who have not yet fully yield to the master oh I surrender Jesus, I now stand with me, everybody. Lift up your hands while many are making their way down to this altar to trust God in a way they have not trusted Him before. Come, my unsafe friends. Come. Oh, I surrender. Precious Lord, I I give all to be my blessed Savior. Raise your hand and sing it again. I It's a conscious moment for you to make a decision whether or not you're going to trust God with your life, with your family, with your health, with your finances, with your soul. If you confident him enough, you will trust him. Oh, oh God. time in the house. It's about and eyes are closed. Consciously. Dear God. As an unsaved man. Woman, boy, girl. As a backslider. As a conscious Christian who oh, no. that some things are not yet fully surrendered because of the level of your faith lift up your faith where you can lay it all at Jesus' feet thank you Lord Everybody pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. We bow in your presence, acknowledging that you are the great God over all. The record is before us of persons who have trusted you wholeheartedly. And all you came through for them, Lord, in lions, then you showed up. In the midst of burning fiery furnace, you showed up. On the raging sea, you showed up. In the midst of hopelessness and despair, you showed up. In the midst of sickness, affliction, and poverty, you showed up. Even in the midst of death, you showed up. 
Oh God, nothing is impossible with thee. I ask you now, Jesus, to take our faith to another level where we are fully confident that you are the never failing God. And thus we will entrust everything into your hands. Our life, our health, our families, our finances, our future. Oh God Almighty, our souls, we want to give them all to you today because you can guide us. You can instruct us in the way that we ought to go. I pray for these standing around the altar. There are men and women, boys and girls, who have come maybe for different reasons. Oh God, through the words preached, they would have received different kinds of challenges. Oh God, some for salvation, some for reclamation, some for recommitment and dedication, some for healing, others for deliverance, maybe for hope and inspiration. Please, Lord, visit with each one. Minister to them now. Mighty Holy Spirit, precious Holy Spirit, life-giving Holy Spirit, descend in all your glory, your power and your majesty, and crown this altar in the name of Jesus. And all over this sanctuary, those in my viewing and listening audiences, dear God, let them not be denied. They have their needs. Help them to bring them to their altars right now. The altar is in the bedroom, in the living room, in the kitchen. Oh God Almighty, in the office, wherever. Bring them to that altar. And may they say yes to Jesus. We pray for one and we pray for all in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands, everybody in the house. Shut up your eyes. Close them, close them, close them. Make a connection. Come on. Open your mouth now and begin to thank God. This is a praising church. Ain't nobody listening to you, only God the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Good atmosphere in which to praise Him. Good atmosphere in which to thank Him. God Almighty, where is the church? Hey, yo, my say, Lord. We worship you. Don't beg him anything now, just worship him. Don't beg him nothing. Don't beg, don't beg, don't beg, don't beg. Give, 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 give unto the Lord glory and honor. Give him the glory due unto his name. Bring your offering of praise. Dear God, where is a praising church? Oh! Bring your offering of praise. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer, we offer, we give him, hey, my God, the glory is coming down. We offer unto you. Praise him, children. Praise him. The sacrifice of thanksgiving. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hey, Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Faith in Jesus. My mountains remove faith in his promise successfully prove the saints and the prophets depended on God who too can serve him at home and abroad faith in the Father, faith in the Son, faith in the Holy Ghost, victory is won, demons will tremble and sinners away, faith in Christ Jesus, can any Big Faith when my spirit is discouraged and weak. When those whom I've trusted have fallen defeat. Faith to be happy when sadly accused. Faith in my Savior when I'm surely abuse clap your hands and praise him everybody come on shout 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 i don't know why you don't want to open your mouth you know. your mouth is a weapon your mouth is a weapon it releases power death and life yeah. God bless you. Lift up both of your hands, everybody. Lord, I pray over this congregation. And I ask you now to minister to every person's needs. Let not one be denied. Let not one be defeated in the name of Jesus. Let not one break ranks. But let everyone trust you wholeheartedly and wait upon the fullness of your time for the fullness of your blessing. Save, heal, deliver, and set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.